Good day, everyone. My name is Maria Kondzielska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. Do you know the name of Nina Novak? Probably not, but you should. She became one of the most recognizable Polish ballet dancers in USA. And right now, being 97 years old, she's with me in the studio. Madam, it's absolutely incredible. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Let's move back in the history and watch how Nina Novak looked on the stage. How your career looked like on Broadway and in other U.S. Oh, I I tried to make a fan of the of the popular dancing and learn learn American. I was uh, first selected as an American uh, from Texas girl. Also by Agnes De Mille, uh, she was very famous choreographer. She selected Polish girl who couldn't speak English to do a cowgirl. That's funny. In Rodeo. <laughs> it was a ballet Rodeo, which is in the book. And I did a cowgirl. I didn't speak uh, English because I could catch the music and the rhythm quicker even than the other girls at the time. Because uh, classical ballet in the United States progressed from that time when I came after the war, when the uh, Russian European group moved to US, the Monte yes, Carlo, they the came, and the uh, later Balanchink stay, Russian uh, choreographer, he made a little better n uh, level of education, classical education in. Uh, United in States, US, I understand. but the United States was uh, in this uh, Europe was uh, much higher educated, and that was uh, for me. It was very easy to jump into European uh, uh, repertoire. I understand. So we catch up. I mean, actually, they needed to catch up to you, and not you yes. to catch up to yes. them. Yes. Yes. And so, um, how old were you when you? had your last proper performance on the stage? How old I was? I was 65. You were 65? Yes. Oh, that's... And with, uh, with partner, and with 32 poetes, the famous poetes. Well, it's pretty incredible, because usually uh, ballet dancers leave the stage being 40, being 40, 38. Less, and they never occupied themselves with ballet. That's true. I am very different. They like to live a, a, a normal life. But somehow I got so uh, happy with this not normal life that I am living up to now. <laughs> <laughs> Teaching. They, they talk. No, no, normal life is not to. Uh, be on stage and not to have anything to do to, to teaching uh, uh, other generation. And I am absolutely opposite. And you became... Of all the, my the, the prima ballerinas, they, they were my uh, colleagues. And you became also a choreographer later. Yes. I, and I, was, uh, I started to be famous as a teacher. Wonderful, that's so amazing. My uh, girl won six medals in Russia in a con in concourse with the, the best of the best. So you have achievements not only as a performer, but also as a teacher. Yeah. Yes. I loved my work. I loved other people to dance well. And uh, as I had very good school and uh, facility, t technical facility, I taught uh, a technical facility. I wish 
it could be taught more stronger here in Poland. Oh, interesting to hear as well. And could you share us a little bit more how Broadway looked like in the 60s and 70s? How did you, how were you treated also as a ballerina? What your life looked like? Oh, over there I had to practically live over there all day because you were dancing, there were a, a show five times a day. Five times a day? Yes. So I had to stay only eat, rest and dance, eat, rest and dance, and uh, only with dancing brief, briefly. Not very long because the picture was going. Before the picture was uh, a performance. That was a time uh, uh, later they disappeared, this, this kind of... Uh, I understand. So you were dancing before, before the, the movie? They, they showed the movies. Oh, I see. And I danced with very famous from Hollywood, Paul Hekun, uh, uh, a dancer. Yes. He actually selected me because I was learning quickly and also I was willing to work hard. So it, it was uh, naturally I, I had to make a career. <laughs> I had to make money to send to, my, to Poland. That they would live uh, properly. And I was sending clothes, lots of clothes. And I started to love to teach. So my life brought a surprise. I had a car accident. Oh, I see. In, in Venezuela. And I was for 100 days in one place, immobile. And I told myself that I am not going to leave dancing. Oh, I, I will start again. So as soon as I was out of... Uh, you're, you're put uh, in, uh, in Gips, yes? Yes, uh, to be immobile. Yes. When I start to walk, I walk on, uh, uh, naturally, not alone yet. And little by little, I started to learn from the beginning, like I would be in school in Warsaw Opera. Position, the Izrinska. Step by step again. Yes. And you bend. And, and I dance, and I dance with my student. And with 30 to 40 days, I dance after the, having this. Car I came accident. even to Warsaw, I dance, I remember. Just, so we it will... was after uh, I had an accident. It was before I had an accident, I was much younger, so I danced two big uh, uh, ballets. But later, when I came, I danced uh, uh, in, in opera. But tell us please more, just to wrap up this part of your American life and your American achievements also in Broadway and other cities. Could you tell me please, were you not tired with this kind of life of um, moving from one to another place and not having home? And... Oh, yes and no, because at the time the, the, uh, uh, people loved ballet and they were already waiting. The performances were sold out every place and people from society were waiting. They had a, a big uh, for us uh, uh, events, especially uh, when you reach uh, to, be, to be not yet uh, prima ballerina or ballerina, but uh, uh, to be soloist. They were in, uh, we were invited to the best places in the United States. The, the culture was very high and that time it was not as pro popular as uh, uh, right now, in, in our time. Uh, so we, uh, uh, the Belarus uh, had a big success. Always sold out wherever we went. We were traveling 90 city up to 100 city a year. Could you imagine being a ballerina in the 40s, 50s and 60s on Broadway and traveling all over the United States, that's life of Nina Novak. If you'd like to learn more, stay tuned and watch other episodes of Poland Daily Culture.